yeah, maybe not they leak too much, but like just say what, what your feeling is today for them. Yeah. Um, essentially, the goal right now is like you know move the the protocol into its long term state. Um, like we we did our kind of bootstrapping thing. The expectation was that it took a whole lot longer than it did. Um, and so, like, you know, I think that there's a, a difference between what the protocol looks like in that and kind of a steady state. Um, right now is like an awkward little interim period, I guess. Um, I mean, the, the goal there is like, I think the we're successful in it, I guess. Uh, treasury we're completely autonomous. It, I guess. Um, uh, market operations treasury, autonomous. Autonomous governance um, autonomous. Operations, um, um, autonomous. Autonomous. That autonomous. There is a stronger that connection that between a stronger treasury growth and benefit, but not necessarily for home holders. Um, so like, um, that you would separate, uh, like. In yield on the treasury from ohm i i don't like the fact that like they kind of got conflated to be the same thing i don't think that that's a bad thing to bet on but just that like like i feel like ohm became like a bunch of different things for different people you know you would talk to one guy and he's like this and then you talk to someone else and it's this and like you know like i think like it, it's good to be flexible but at the same time and like have different layers to it but like having those all like i think it just creates a lot of confusion and a lot of like i feel like it creates like a tug of war um of like go in this direction go in this direction um you know the direction that we're going i think is the direction that we've always been going in which is trying to build a currency um it's not an easy thing uh i don't know i mean, <laughs> I don't want to stop working on this. That, that's the thing. Like, you know, uh, this is like a multi-year project. Like, you know, maybe in like a year or two, I'll, I'll give up if we're still fucked. But like until then, um, you know, I think that we're in the strongest position that we've ever been in. Um, but you wouldn't believe it. Like, um, you know, kind of everything looks like it's the, the contrary, but it's like, okay. Um, you know, I, I think like kind of can't, lose any more than you already have i guess um so down bad but you know it's either equally down bad or um not down as bad yeah i mean i mm -hmm. talked to someone today actually that was like do you try to be vague when you talk about things and i don't <laughs> um <laughs> that was a funny question um like I wrote that paper uh, like two weeks ago, and I was like, there's like two other ones. Here, wait, give me one sec. Um, it's more about like, I want to communicate things in a full fledged fashion and not like ramblings of a madman. Um, so, like, <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that on an AMA, right? Um, but yeah i mean nothing's changed that's the thing um like, yeah i think the only thing that's changed is like sentiment and like you know fuck it like exactly <laughs> man, that's also, if that's that doesn't also... change in another 24 months like all right maybe you can win but until then like fuck. <laughs> exactly which, which is also like all all the critique that you lately just see on olympus is the price right like on the fundamentals barely anyone can 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 get us on that because nothing has changed and actually things have improved right when with v1 it was oh the the contract keys are lost whatever right now we're we have a new migrated thing we, we basically migrate a four billion dollar protocol never seen i think in the history uh, <laughs> that that has been done with all the staking that we had and so on but that migration is also basically now uh, fully finished we have better fundamentals on, on every single uh, thing that we have we have a lot of ideas we have more partnerships than we ever had and we are now in this state i think Zeus, and that's what you want to say where we are because of the price point that we are at also able to do very interesting things looking towards the future and we are in that place where we are now much more than ever a reserve currency right with, with limited downside risk and if there's like any big bumps we can even also uh, sell bonds into that which is also again strengthening the protocol right 
dude. I mean, the the whole idea, like the underpinning thesis has always been, right, that you create this entity in the market that has pretty absolute power to do whatever it wants to. And everyone else falls in line or leaves. Um, and it doesn't care which one you do. Um, the strongest position it can be in is here, right? And like the, the whole thing with the internal bonds is that you actually expand that dynamic to like you multiply it. Um, so you're reducing the liquid supply. And so like, you know, if, if we were to run internal bonds now, um, which they're actually like easy to do, it's just a matter of uh, when do you do so? Um, like, I think that they're, it's not appropriate to do right now. But if you're to do that today and you got like half of supply into, you know, like a what June expiry and a September expiry, um, the actual supply would be over collateralized by 100%. Um, you know, <laughs> you would kind of be more like um would be more collateralized on a liquid basis than die is. Um, like there, it's just a cool dynamic. Like, you know, we, we kind of spent the whole year and like really on the fringes of that. And like, you're like collateralized 10%, like, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Like the, the, the design space that's opened up is gigantic. Um, like I've seen like with the Tarun paper, um, he's come to similar conclusions as I have. Um, you know, I don't think that these things are like that like it's pretty intuitive, I guess, that you just have this huge whale that like if that whale wants to optimize for the stability of the asset, like it can do so. And who are you to bet against? Um, you know, <laughs> this infinite supply of the asset and near infinite demand for the asset um you know it's a losing proposition to do anything except what it tells you to do um yeah it, it's just like <laughs> we got a little ahead of ourselves right um, um sucks, but not much you can do <laughs> it's just like you know have have like the the optics constantly lagging behind the reality i guess exactly but like talking about that so a question that came up i think uh during the call before this one was also so the api is is currently 800 percent, and the treasury is not really growing at that rate right um wouldn't it also make sense to start adapting that that api and and, and so on to get more in line with the current treasury growth and like, what is the what is the goal with API API in like the in like the mid to long term anyway? I mean, the goal there is that you're growing the supply out. I mean, I would be favorable. I don't think that it needs to like. I think a good route would be uh, switching how that reward rate is computing from total supply to stake supply. Um, so you just kind of like, because really all, all you're doing is like. Um, treasury's not growing at the same rate then just assets per token is falling but the thing is like that doesn't exist in a bubble um, so it's assets per token versus price per token so if price per token has depreciated more than assets per token then it's actually you're just like uh, expanding the premium by emitting more tokens out there um, I don't know like I'm I don't know if people are negative to that. If they're not, like I would be favorable to like, you know, the the reward rate framework has a range. We're still at the top of that range. Um, I would feel it'd be appropriate to go more into the middle of it. Like I don't think it really matters like that much, but at the same time, like it would just <laughs> like diminish the amount of number go down in that like supply goes up less. Um, cause the thing is like for, uh, to go flat, you need to depreciate by half a percent per day on a compounding basis. Um, just math, right? Uh, so, but <laughs> no one likes number go down. Um, and I think that that kind of compounds itself. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to push for that, like, you know, I'm on board with it. 
And how does this relate to your paper, right? So you wrote a big ass paper, which I think my um five percent of this chat has actually read. But your paper basically sets out a vision as well for like a more bond centric approach. And that yeah. together with APY is quite interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with that, like the yields on staking should just decrease. Um but it doesn't really change the actual yields that are experienced. It's just how you access it. Um, the idea there being like the the job of stakers is like twofold. Um, one of those jobs is to keep supply off the market. Um, staking kind of doesn't enforce that because um, you have you know you every SOM could turn into ohm in an instant and you know that's kind of like the the promise of s home but that should demand lower yields than something where you're dependent on someone else just recognizing the value of it in the future um it's kind of the same thing but you reduce the actual liabilities for the protocol um like uh you can just think about like you know you could hold a bond token you can sell that bond token for home um, from someone else that has ohm and is willing to buy your bond token from you, but the actual ohm that is out there is less. Um, so you don't really notice it, but in a like bank run scenario, um, the market's going to kind of circuit break itself. Um, so that doesn't really like it doesn't need to decrease emissions. It doesn't need to decrease supply growth, but it diminishes the impact of that. Um, in that someone looking to exit is going to push yields up. Someone looking to enter is going to push yields down. Um, and you're going to move that process from the protocol just mandating, like here's what the yields are, um, to behavior dictating what the yields are. Um, it's something that comes with maturity, right? Like I don't think that we would have been able to do that at all um, a year ago. Uh, but like... These are periods where I think that the community hardens, um, you know, where you kind of shake out the grifters and you get left with people that like, you know, <laughs> I've been there with a lot of things. It's like you just kind of hopefully not give up, but in a sense of like, you know, like uh, I'm just going to ride this thing out. And like, you know, if I've been through this, like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what can't I go through? Um those are the people that are going to play those markets and operate them efficiently. Um, yeah, that, that felt a little rambly, but... Uh... <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. But like, you, you say the community hardens, right? Like, community is also changing from, I think, like, or if you, if you were in this Discord a year ago, I think there's much different people. Um, like, how do you... Like, what what is what is an ohm holder like? Like, let's say in a year, ideally, what is an ohm holder? Is that a good question? You get me? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that our community kind of segments out into a lot of different things. Um, would be my mm -hmm. expectation. Like that that should be the goal, right? Is that like you're in the Olympus community, but where you live in that community is like the community to something else um mm -hmm. meta community i guess yeah. uh yeah where i want to get back in the discord dude i miss it in here um especially I to you here. Josh, <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> uh, busy dude no no i i, I think I'm indeed it's like it's like, like carrying <laughs> it's like carrying the ohm spirit across DeFi, right, and like cross and across Web three or whatever you want to call it, like that's what I our community probably should be like. Be these people that that indeed want to want to innovate with like using a different different currency that that TradFi is using that also have the same type of spirit. Um, I think that that's very important to be also this still this open community to 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 everyone. Um, no, like also off topic. By the way, is uh, is popping lately. So if you if you like off topic, off topic, uh, please also visit that one. Uh, we have a lot of music going on, like 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 in the, the past times, and people are sending you pussy now. So it's uh it's also like in good old days. Um, what is a bigger priority for 
us right now expansion into other chains or utility building within our existing Proteus cohorts? Oof. What's the multi chain future looking like? I think the most important thing is proper utilization of the treasury. Um, Cause like, I think that that's been the biggest lagger of anything. Um, mm. Like, you know, it, it should be something that is both autonomous and algorithmic, but also directly impactful to people. Um, I think that those are the biggest things that like, are an issue, I guess, right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that they're very hard to do. Um, like, uh, I'm trying to, like, spent the past two weeks just, like, trying to write out and, uh, like, I want to be able to communicate these things all at once and not fucking ramble for half an hour. But, <laughs> um, it's okay like trying <laughs> um but those are the biggest like i don't think that like i think that we should probably try to do liquidity on like one other chain um but there's no real benefit to like being on every chain um so we did the proteus program the funny thing i was talking to jala the other day because he's been like heading up proteus um and <laughs> he was telling me that like we had a budget of what was it like 30,000 geom um to do proteus and i think we started doing that like 4 months ago and we've actually only used like less than 100 um so <laughs> just in terms of like I i'm pretty glad because like you know really the, the point of that was to gather information <laughs> on uh like where we should probably set up a little camp um that's been accomplished He's kind of looking at it now as like a good way as well to uh, like build relationships with people on other chains, with projects on other chains, um, which I love. Um, but just in terms of like, you know, <laughs> I, I like I I said it in that proposal where I was like, you know, like this budget shouldn't all be used. Um, and I'm super glad that it didn't get used at all because um, it accomplished what it was supposed to without really spending any money on it. So mm. um, that was good to hear. Um, but yeah, I think like if we were to do like, I think Arbitrum and Avalanche are the biggest ones that kind of demonstrated, um, that they would be value driven to having an outpost there. Um, deprecating, maybe not deprecating the program, but cause it, it needs to be, I don't remember if that was November or December, but it does have to be renewed if we want to continue that. Um, but having a baseline there that the protocol is facilitating. Same way that it does so on Ethereum, I think would make sense because when we, you know, a lot of people can just move over. Um, there's like the whole R and D has been doing a cross chain approach of like having the full Ethereum set up on other chains um, through like cross chain messaging instead of cross chain token bridging, um, which would be super cool. And then we could uh, like have the setup where like you don't actually need to go to ethereum so like all of the protocol level security things are on ethereum because that's still the most secure chain um but for actual people you know you don't need to interact with them i guess ethereum gas fees have been better in the past couple of weeks <laughs> as activity dries up um so maybe it's not quite as painful as it was a couple of months ago um but unfortunately like ethereum layer one is not going to scale to ever not be expensive um and so you know getting ahead of that um i think will be a good thing um mm. yeah mm. next time that next time sense. there's thought it'll uh it won't result in thousands of dollars of minor revenue and a bunch of ETH getting burned and pumping mm. ETH back at ours <laughs> okay a question that also is often asked, and I, I even asked you this, right? Um, where is the buyer pressure coming from? In the not not just short term, right? But like like mid term, long term, is that people that really indeed see limited downsides, basically quite <laughs> significant upsides, not just from a price perspective, from supply perspective, of course. Is it that like, and and who who are these buyers? Uh, so I think it starts with people that are looking for growth in a mitigated risk environment. 
So if you're in crypto, you're probably not all that risk averse. But, you know, I think in risk adjusted return or risk adjusted returns terms a lot of the time. Um, and so something that can backstop you. So, you know, risk is still there, but it takes more of a tail risk scenario to, you know, have the, the, the ball drop, um, you know, but that, that's still like, I don't think that will ever be quite as degenerate, but like still more on the degenerate side of things. Um, but then, you know, as, as treasury grows and the network scales, um, that dynamic actually improves to the point that, you know, the growth has diminished, but so has the risk. Um, that's when you can start to go after like <laughs> the majority of the capital in the world is not looking for returns. They're looking for safety. Um, you know, if you have a portfolio of billions of dollars, you don't care about making money with it. All you want to do is protect it. Um, you want to deploy it and use it, uh, productively, but you care more about not losing money than you care about making money. Um, I think that this is kind of foreign to, you know, cause everyone in crypto is kind of looking for like a hundred X, like, <laughs> you know, someone with a, a 10 figure, 11 figure portfolio is looking for 10 basis points. Um, but <laughs> so, you know, th there's kind of a shift from there. And then I, I think like the, the social aspect in the economy is really important where, you know, as time goes on, we want more and more activity to just be happening in home. Um, hmm. so I, I'm, I'm pretty bearish on like dollarized DeFi. Um, you have this dynamic of like, like the people that are looking for, you know, not to make money, but to not lose money. I don't think are ever going to come into DeFi because in traditional markets, you have the backstop of the monetary issuer that's going to protect those markets that you're in. You're never going to have that in DeFi. And so the risk to reward equation is never going to work out. Um, and so, you know, the thing that we can provide is like, um, it's home denominated, but you have the same dynamic. Um, you know, and I think that like, you know, I, I'm kind of stuck on, like, I don't think that it's, like, months or years out in the way that some people will say, like, but it is inevitable that, like, a new dominant currency rises um, just by virtue of history. Like, it's just inevitable. Um, I think, actually, Powell, like, said something about it yesterday or two days ago. Um, it's not a bad thing. Like, you know, it's not, <laughs> you didn't sound very worried about it. Um, but, you know, when I think about, like, what can provide that role, like, there's not a whole lot. Um, you know, the, if you can provide that well, um, and the biggest thing is if you can onboard people efficiently, because, like, one of the issues that I see with, like, like, there's, like, the whole hyper Bitcoinization moment that I don't know if it's talked about anymore, but it used to be where it was like, oh, like the dollar will collapse and like everyone will rush into Bitcoin and Bitcoin will go to infinity as the dollar goes to zero. And it's like, that's like a terrible outcome um, versus like, you know, Olympus, <laughs> you know, is able to provide liquidity um, for, you know, the previous reserve currency to onboard people into this one. You know, it's able to buy up debt um, from the the legacy system to soften whatever blow exists there um you know i think like like that's where it comes from it's like that this thing can be a force for good like there are a lot of problems in the existing world that are just like you've had a great run like you know the longest bull run in human history um it's really impressive it's not something to jeer at like you know <laughs> they've done a good job and it's just like you know everything has a lifespan and like what's going to fix that like cheering on like i hope it collapses because i'm going to make money is stupid um you know i i think that this can actually like help that I, I think that it can transition into something that like like you just need an alternative that can coexist and absorb the other system um <laughs> i don't know if we get there but i think it's mm. worth trying like no that's fair. i think that like if we can get there like I, I wouldn't be questioning like where's demand gonna come from like where does demand for like the dollar come from it's that people need a good currency so that they cannot worry about money you know you shouldn't be worrying about like 
the value. <clears throat> There's so many issues with just people being worried about inflation. Just like the last thing that a normal person should be thinking about is what's the value of this thing that I'm transacting with. You want them to be worried about how do I start a business and be productive for society and create actual value. Um, you know, like money is just like a means to like do actual things. <laughs> it's not like a means in and of itself, you know, like hyper financialization will tell you that money is the point And it's like, no, <laughs> real things are the point. Um, anyways, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, okay. One question was, and I'm quickly going to ask it because this guy is in our discord a lot and he was asking about it. Um, why isn't API correlated to demand for ohm uh, premium over backing? For example, when it's trading under backing, um, there is no bonding, so zero API. When it's trading 0.5% over backing, API only to cover bond dilution. And when it's higher, yeah, you just also scale it higher to some point. Um, is that why? Why isn't there like a yeah, why isn't that something that we would consider? Is it something we could consider? What are the problems? Yeah, I mean, that was actually like initial design. I mean, the, the conclusion was that you actually exacerbate volatility. So if the faster the treasury grows, the higher the yield is, then the faster the treasury will grow. And then the higher the yield is, and the faster the treasury grows until you explode and then there's no yield. Um, and no treasury growth. Um, I mean, I guess we didn't really escape that, but you know, I think consistency is good of like, you know, it, it needs to like, <laughs> what's the point of the whole runway, right? Um, I like, I don't know. I, I think like the one thing that does should happen, like what you want is, uh, the liquidity pools to grow at the same rate as supply so if that's the case then the supply growth actually doesn't matter um you know if you have supply 10x but supply or price falls 90 percent, nothing happened um you just changed like the denominator right it's like a uh, trading a dollar for 10 dimes like there's no difference in value it's just like how many coins do you have um yeah, so it, it like I I don't think that supply is quite matched right now. Um, probably be a good idea to remove some liquidity as well because damn if it's not liquid, um, you know, <laughs> and I don't think that like I don't think that we're ready to be that liquid. In that really like what you end up with is like there's enough liquidity that bidding doesn't move the price up all that much. Um, but then because of that, it just looks like, oh, it's never going to go up. And so people are more inclined to leave. Um, but given that supply is growing at the same rate, like the yield could be 10 X what it is now. It could be zero. It wouldn't actually matter. Um, you'll, you'll have the backing per token decrease, but like that doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? Like, is it better if, you know, backing per token is 10x what it is now but price is 10,000x what it is now like you're less backed um you know same goes for the inverse um yeah does that make sense dude i really just feel like i like ramble oh <laughs> i need to work on it <laughs> no it's okay it's okay yeah people have missed you man um so yeah. Uh, someone is asking, I've asked this before, but love an official response. You'll never get an official response here, sir. But um, will we ever phase out USD-backed stablecoins from the treasury? Isn't that a necessary step to detach ourselves from TradFi? I don't think we should try to detach ourselves from TradFi. Like, the, why? You want an independent system, but you don't want to, like, cast out the previous system, right? Because, like... Like, <laughs> the reality is that everything real happens in TradFi. Like, uh, like you know, if you want to do something real, like, you can't be like, oh, screw you guys. Like, um, it's got to be something that's beneficial there. Like, what I think would be, I was talking to someone today about, like, mm, <laughs> do I say that? Uh, 
like essentially what we do right right now when we buy like die or lusd we're buying debt right we're buying debt from someone like in the case of lusd it's only eth uh holders that took out debt against their eth um in the case of die it's a little bit more ambiguous because there's like multiple collaterals um i think that the biggest problem in the world right now is debt um there is so much of it that you can't have interest rates anymore because the interest payments alone are too much. Um, Olympus buys the debt, right? You need someone to buy the debt. There's no one left to buy the debt. Um, like, <laughs> they need us, man. Indeed, indeed. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. What what do you think that will happen? By the way, like uh, with 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 inverse bonds, I think um, my my personal opinion there is that we will hit it like maybe once, and then it will like never hit it again because people think like I'm stupid to do it. What, what's your what's your prediction or like expectation of what will happen? Can you repeat the what 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 happens with inverse so, so, bonds? Yeah, what what happens if like we we hit that point right when when someone it's not stupid to trigger it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it'll be like short-term impactful um, in the same way that the normal bonds are not short-term impactful. Um, you know, they don't really like change direction, but what they will do is just increase backing for everyone that doesn't buy into them. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't look at it as, as something that's going to like have any really near-term impact. You're just going to continue... No the growth of backing for token um mm -hmm. same as it continues to like that that shit only goes up like throughout all of this it's only gone up um like because the treasury has bought back like 20 percent of the supply of home in the past three months um maybe, maybe maybe expand on that because people don't don't necessarily think think like this right so yeah. what do you mean with the treasury has bought back home yeah so it owns the liquidity pools when people mm -hmm. sell into the liquidity pool, the protocol is buying those tokens from it. Um, it doesn't in the so what what the if you imagine the pool exists in terms of the pricing, but it burns all the tokens that it buys and then mints it when someone buys out of the pool. It could have burned away twenty percent of supply. Um, like right now, the protocol could pull the liquidity and burn twenty percent of supply. Um, that was like five percent. Actually, I think it owned. It took more than twenty. Uh, it, it was what four or five percent of supply in there in November. Um, so essentially, like the 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 actual supply of the token has been increased by sixteen to eighteen percent. I don't know what it is today, but as of like a week or two ago, um. That's wild. And, and essentially, so you, you have a backing for token. It's decreasing the supply of tokens. That backing per, backing per GM, I should say, um, grows. Like, I, I have a picture of it. Um, I got to... One sec. I sent this in here a couple of weeks ago, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it'll take me a minute, but okay, it's probably on your fifth laptop or something. Um... <laughs> sure, <laughs> please. I'm, I'm too close to that number, right? <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. He has a computer, <laughs> um, no, like yeah. <laughs> I saw so, so, some founder of some protocol some saying founder. he never used his laptop, so that was a weird one. Um, um, yeah. This is as of like some amount of time ago. Um, here, wait, wait, I can. So that's like, it's like supply of GM here. I'm going to send a different one, which might. Uh, a little better. Which row is that? F. Okay. Chart. So, got 
Damn, where's the labels? Um, cloning. Like, check it. So, like, the difference between these, right, is what is in the liquidity pools that the protocol owns. Um, so, as those deviate, that's the protocol owning a larger portion of the supply because it's repurchased it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so, I think um, people don't realize this, but, like, it's it's indeed, we are already bit buying back home, right? So, taking it off the market through yeah. these liquidity pools. If it goes back up, Price people will basically buy home from us, and then like uh, supply will expand. Like not supply, but outstanding supply will be will become bigger. Um, then buying back supply. Yeah, <laughs> someone's saying um, never thought about it like that. Yeah, you have to be a, a madman to think about it like that. But uh, like you want to do. It's, it makes it uh, just the message it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> like is this like the thing that you that reality. you wake up? Is it what you wake up to and like slowly <laughs> get excited about? Our... <laughs> well, no, dude. I saw Asfi post something on Twitter, like yeah. with like these two, and I was like, "Wait, is that real?" And so I like you know, I punched in the numbers, and I was like, "Yeah, that that's accurate." Um, because I hadn't thought about the floating token. I don't know if he was either, but like, <laughs> I think he's what put me onto it. Um, yeah, I mean, because the, the yeah, yeah, oh, hello, Ashby. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> it's doubled again throughout this. Um, yeah, which is, I think it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Ashby. When VST VLT depth tau geo meta curve pool. Yeah, I'm not gonna ask that. Man. Um, Zeus, maybe recall like a year ago. What place were you back then? Like uh, probably on the tenth night of no sleep, third of March. Oh, uh, a year ago was the we announced like the pre-sale. That was, <laughs> dude. Like the Discord was very quiet. Um, uh, everyone was just kind of vibing, and I'm just like typing messages in here and then uh it was like if you were in the the discord before this like you have that option if not and then a bunch of people came in and they're like when pre-sale can i have put me on list sir <laughs> oh and i did the whole like i was like dm me <laughs> if you're in here so i could like verify it and i like talked to like everyone that was in the discord that was fun um that was a waste of time, probably, but at the same time, it wasn't. It was cool meeting people. Mm -hmm. what Indeed, I still remember that. Yeah, that was a year ago, yeah. <laughs> I think around this time is when, like, the I think the 4th of March, the pre-sale indeed closed. And then um, a lot of people came in because Fiscant has posted something on Twitter. And mm -hmm. after, the, after the wireless was closed. So I know, for example, Chala, myself, some others that are probably here got into the the whitelist of people that didn't claim their first whitelist, <laughs> and uh, those people could get 69 ohm. Like today, 69 ohm, you could buy a bread with that. But back in the day, that was um, it was a nice one. Um, so yeah, fun times, fun times. So for the people that weren't around back then, the, we launched I think the 23rd of March. Uh, staking went live week after, two weeks after, uh, something like that. Um, bonding went live the month after, so there are a lot of, uh, lot of good things happening. Um, ah, Kappa here from the whitelist. Hello, sir. Um, and so did you ever reimburse anyone for the gas tip? Um, just want to ask. No. Yeah, they got kind of screwed on that one, right? No gas refund. <laughs> no gas. No gas refund. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. And are you going to take it a bit slower next year? <laughs> no, nah, full speed. Full steam ahead. Full, full speed ahead. Okay, we have 10 more minutes, guys. If you have any uh, question, um, 
please ask before Zeus disappears back in his cave to run models. Um, they miss me. Yeah, the, like the chat has never been this active for the past week. It's very good to see. Did I, did I, did I add to this from Quirkus? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough one, man. Yeah, I really, uh, I don't know. If I'll, I'll, do it. I'll do it first, I think. I'm gonna do a um, one. Yeah. So, so Mary, Gilfuck, Joey, Jay, or Sam, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would, I would marry Sam. Just because Sam is like this, this long-term partner that we already have since, since June, right? Like, that was the one that be. I got. <laughs> and then, like, kill Joey because, like, there's still some faith feelings, right? Like. Eh. <laughs> And and yeah, f fuck Jay. That sounds bad, but he's he's above eighty now, so it's okay. So that's how I would do it. See, I don't know if I can marry any of them though, unless we're in like a a country with weird laws. You know, like a child bride. That's child the issue. Sam, <laughs> Sam is like thirty five yeah. or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm 12, remember? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. You have commitment Whoa. issues, <laughs> the set says, okay. Update on GSR. Yes, we have, we have our legal opinion back. Um, <laughs> and they wanted a legal opinion on if we were a security or not. And uh, that was what held us up. Uh, but uh, of course, their proposal, I think they are getting 25k ohm from us. So I don't think that they can market make much with that. But um, so that is at today's prices, not even a million. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so so that's the update there. We have the legal opinion, we can then share it with them, they can see if that's okay for them. And then they can start market making after we make over the, uh, the ohm. Um, what are the marketing communication plans to shift the narrative from Olympus? Help educate people about what Olympus really is. Yeah, I want to go into that. Like a lot of people ask me all the time, like, why don't we step up marketing efforts? Why don't we do, do this, that? Thing is, and then the thing that's also a uh, mistake that we made as DAO is market Olympus too much as like, we have this much revenue. Um, we we are making a lot of money. This 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 and this. Uh, price goes up. That's just good and so on. Like glorifying that a bit too much. What we really should go back to is is we are a currency, right? Uh, we are not a fund. Uh, we are not a product shop that is going to release products like OP all the time. We are a currency at heart. Um, and that's also you cannot really market the currency. It's not like you go walk across the street and, and someone says to you on an on a, on a advertisement board, buy USD, right? No one says that. It's ridiculous. You shouldn't do that. Um, so what we should do is we should instead educate. Educate about that Olympus is a currency, what that currency is, that if you hold Olympus and Olympus supply grows, that you're better off, that price not necessarily is the is the is the answer here uh, but supply is and for supply to grow we need of course also partners so make sure that we help our partners with marketing um on like their products that use ohm instead of ohm itself i think that's very very important to notice here so if you ever see anyone saying like we're a fund or or we're generating this much yield on our treasury which is nice that's not that's not the core message we should have the core message be ohm is a currency and that's why why we'll focus on marketing on that and specifically our education as well anything to add uh, uh the worst thing we ever did was market everything was lit <laughs> when marketing was just like here's what we're up to like <laughs> that was about it <laughs> And you get all these base chads so like seem to exist in the in the chat right now that are just there <laughs> for the culture and not for the pump and yeah. So my uh, girlfriend I don't said, think it's well, the, the marketing goes, but like it's just the, the acronym itself. It's a crutch. It's a, she 
Jesus do it when you Christ. don't do it and you want to do it when you I don't know you don't do it when you do need to do it like whatever <laughs> apologies <laughs> <laughs> we even got Adam out of his cave uh, that's oh, amazing yeah. it's like the first time in six months this guy is here for the people that don't know Adam is um, it's like our special special needs uh DAO contributor who sometimes did something. Um, so yeah, welcome, Adam. <laughs> uh, let's see. Any other questions? We have five minutes left, guys. Shoot your load now. Uh, I'm going to answer one, which is how big do I think Olympus is in a year? I have no idea in a year. In a decade, maybe two decades, it's either going to be zero or four commas. Like... And there, you know, the odds might be skewed towards zero, I won't lie. Um, but it's binary oh. limited. Um, that, <laughs> that's oh, the only answer. Bring your own bags. <laughs> I'm not putting my own bag, dude. It's just the reality is like, you know, zero or 100. Like, um, I, hate you. I like binary bets, dude. Um, you know, like, <laughs> especially when, uh, you know, it's going to be zero because the protocol has bought back the entire supply. So, like, you know. <laughs> Actually, does that make it an infinity then? Hmm. Fuck. Anyways. Um, I mean by market cap. Anyways, I had another question, which was, uh, did Jeff ever get his brand? Jeff gets his brand? What? Jeff said he was going to get branded with an Omega when ah no when, I, I don't I don't think I don't think yes, <laughs> I don't think yes. <laughs> yeah that's interesting like for people that 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 uh, also want to know what happened around this time last year so so we were trading at I think two hundred dollars with like a sixty nine k supply or like fifty k supply which was ten million dollar market cap and Zeus literally went on a community call. <laughs> and said, stop buying. <laughs> it shouldn't be this high. <laughs> and everyone was like, why are you fudding your bag even before this launched? And, it, and I remember like one full pre-sale allocation uh, sold and then everyone bought bought it up because that pool was so tiny. Uh, I think the price crashed from 200 to 70 or something. It was a legendary moment. Legendary moment. So yeah, uh, gold standard. I'm still waiting on that. So let me hit 10 billion Zeus. I hope you, you're ready for the gold standard. I, I'm, dude, I think the best times are when I'm flooding the bags, honestly. I think I have a lot of, uh, if, you, if you run the numbers. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's why you came up with V2 migration, right? <laughs> <laughs> I lost my keys. <laughs> uh, fun times, fun times. Okay, okay, okay. Made it. <laughs> V3 migration soon, sir, please. <laughs> Actually, people asked that last week in the community call as well. So what did we learn for V2 migra V3 migration? And I was like, no, <laughs> that we won't have one. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when, <laughs> when OP permissionless is a question that I saw a couple of times. Maybe that's a last serious one. Any ID there? Uh, I think. Yeah, I was talking to Indigo about it earlier. Um, what was the... It was like all these little, like, tiny little implementation things, because uh, the goal... If it's permissionless, one, it's got to be pretty rock-solid and secure. Um, but you also want, like, flexibility in using it, I guess. If it's too rigid, then it's less helpful. Um so there's like, yeah, Indigo's screaming, we're almost done. Um, so Indigo, am I allowed to say anything about like what we were talking about? Okay, yeah, we're like adding like native tokenization of them um, so that you don't have to do anything. If you start up one of those markets, you can tokenize them if you want to. Um, so like what we might do with internal bonds, um, any project could do. Um, that could be a whole like, staking structure for projects um because it's like like i could see pretty easily like a um curve style thing 
where people are like locking tokens, but you're not actually forcing them individually to lock. You're just saying like, okay, on aggregate, like 90% of the supply is locked here. But like on normal conditions, you can move in and out of that. You just got to find someone else to buy that position off you, which I think is a lot better because you'll remove any ability to like end up with a one entity controlling the entire network and then like you know like owning that token is useless you just want to own the meta token um which like meta governance is a risky thing um so yeah it's just like finishing touches um like yeah okay no that's a good answer devs working <laughs> exactly okay good um, we are closing in on the hour, so I would like to uh, thank everyone for, for joining, especially Zeus. Um, it's uh, nice to have you in here. Everyone, I would also encourage you to go to Off Topic and spam the shit out of it. Um, very much appreciate you all being here, 200 people uh, on Omi Day. It's amazing to have. A lot of OGs uh, saw pass by in the chat. Um, great vibes. I think... As you said, we've, <laughs> it might sound a bit weird, but we've never been in a better place than this. Um, and it is and always will be a long-term play. And we will be the reserve currency of DeFi, right? So I'm 100% I'm convinced of that. So any closing words? Nah, dude, you said it best. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a re for this dude. Re, three, three. <laughs> re for three, three. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Two, three, guys. Enjoy your Omi day. Yeah. Bye. All right. Thank you, sir. See you guys.